Hey guys, my name is Jesse Mew, and welcome back to Whale Island. In the last episode, all of Lapis's singing finally paid off for her when she lured a brand new friend onto the back of our whale. So from the outside, Ananame doesn't really look like anything special, but she is hiding a very important genetic in her traits. She's our first creature to have the bird beak, so I'm hoping that we can pull that into her family today, as long as we can find her a suitable partner to settle down with. It makes me wonder what sort of home she must have come from. Maybe her family was full of bird beaks and wings, but because hers never developed, she was ousted from her tribe, and that's why she showed up on Whale Island, following the beautiful songs of Lapis, which I'm sure are very familiar to her. The birds probably love to sing too, when they're high atop the trees, so maybe that's why she was so fascinated with our mermaid singing. Did she unlock us one of the new genes too? The developers recently updated the beta, so that might actually be one of the genes that we were missing before. Let's see. Yeah, looks like they added all of those extra tails into the mutation menu. So I wonder if they added in the other snouts too. Oh, the bird beak. It looks like we have to fly to unlock it, but there must be some sort of glitch because we definitely haven't done that before. Let's see if the wings are the same. Yeah, we have to fly and attack for those, and look at that number! Okay, there is definitely something wrong with the flying genes, but that being said, this should make it much easier for us to pull that into our tribe in the future. We have the peacock tail now and the scorpion tail, so I'm going to assume that one of these probably unlocked when the game was updated. Our tribe must have met the requirements already while they were wandering around. Maybe it was even due to Lapis's singing. So let's see where we can send our creatures today. I suppose we'll want to find a good place for Laysla to settle down first, since she does need to have her next baby. Maybe we could even choose this nest over here by all of these birch trees. It almost reminds me of the thorns in the uh, swamplands, because at least the babies would be protected from behind. So let's make sure that the rogue males aren't sniffing around here. It looks like they are far enough away, but they shouldn't notice her shifting through the shadows as she tries to make a new home for a family. We could probably fill Rocco's mutation menu with that scorpion tail, and then I bet we'll see one of our scorpion-tailed babies born in that nest today. We'll just have to breed them again after she has her next baby in the nest. And as for you, Cuckoo, We'll have to bring you up to your mate too, because unfortunately we're getting super close to the end of our founder's lifespans. So it would be great if you could find a little root to dig up for her. I'm sure she would really appreciate the extra food. And it looks like our rogue male friend may have found us after all. Oh, this is the sick one too. Okay, Rocco, it might be on you to protect your family soon. Maybe he could even use this as a chance to teach the babies how to keep their families safe. I think Freckles is a little bit more shy. She doesn't have the ram horns after all. She doesn't have a crown to her name. So she wouldn't be very strong against rogue males or baryenas or even all of these pesky bunnies. But Echo, on the other hand... I think he is absolutely raring for adventure. With that mermaid tail of his, he knows just how great his destiny will be. And you are attracting the wrong sort of attention, Lapis. It must be that voice of hers. A lot of you have pointed it out already, and I will confirm. Lapis does have the singing voice of a Totomingo. Oh, wait a second. You're going straight for Ananame, aren't you? Oh my goodness, okay, let's go ahead and skip the turn, and then we're going to have to have her skitter away, so she doesn't risk having a baby with this rogue male. She does have that deformed paw, so if she has a baby with one of these guys, it could very well be a disaster. But I think that's where Gruul is going to come in and save the day. If we scoot him right here, he should be able to protect Lapis quite easily. And he can even land a couple of good hits on him, too. 
And Rocco, it looks like you're going to have to do the same with the sick rogue male. Show Echo how it's done so he can protect everyone in the future. I guess that means it might be time to move North and Sunny away too. They just have one last patch of stinky fruits to pick, and then it's time for you guys to pack up and leave. So you can lick off all of that stinky fruit juice on the way. Cuckoo, I guess you'll have to land a good swipe in too just to scare this rogue male. Oh, he's only down to one more day? That means that even if he gets close to one of our females, they should be able to take him out themselves. But yeah, we'll go ahead and have you guys help lead Anair to her new nest. That way she can still settle down and have her very last baby. And then you guys will be able to take care of whoever is born. I bet they're going to train them up to be stinky fruit collectors. They'll be the first creature to be mentored by our stinky fruit experts. So I hope they're going to enjoy the very unique taste of that exotic fruit. I feel like Anair is probably a little more old-fashioned. She's used to eating roots with her mate, so she would probably prefer to munch on one last root before she passes. But I don't think Cuckoo is going to be able to find them in time. So instead, we'll just settle him down right next to her side, so at least he'll be able to meet his baby before he passes away. You guys can clear out the grass, so hopefully we'll have less trouble with those rogue males in the future. But I think our attacks have officially scared them away. So you must be quite proud of Gruul. Maybe he could use his last turn to swipe up that bunny, so you'll have some extra food to eat on the next turn. The bunnies have made a feast of most of our berries. But I suppose you can't blame them for taking advantage of that opening. I think Ananame would be equally pleased that Gruul was so willing to take the time out of his duties to make sure that everybody over here was safe. So we'll have her gather up the meat for him. You know, I think Gruul was even the one to invite her to the tribe, right? When she was scavenging around for some of the last little morsels we had on these poison berry bushes. He offered up some safer food for her to eat. So I suppose that that, combined with their equal fascination of the mermaids, would probably give them a good reason to bond. Their immunity genes should line up just as well. And not only that, but Gruul's fertility is absolutely excellent. And that's another thing we're going to want to breed into our line. So I think we may have found our very next pairing and hopefully the parents of our first bird line. It won't be easy to pass the bird beak over the derp snout, but we don't want to place any sort of snout in the mutation menu because we don't want to risk overriding it. So instead, we'll just focus on some of the basic genetics, the eyesight and her deformed paw too. Hopefully the running leg will allow her children to collect even more of those berries. Or perhaps they could make their way to the extra stinky fruit. You know, I did wonder if perhaps her family came from the jungle. I feel like winged creatures, beaked creatures of any sort would probably love the jungles. They would have so many trees to fly on top of and build their nests. And I don't think the apes would be able to reach them as long as they were high atop their thrones. The developers actually gave us some lore for the wings. Apparently you can find them in the glaciers on the mountains, so they're considered to be prehistoric genes. Most creatures assume that all of the winged tribes have died out and gone extinct, but Whale Island is the one exception, and this is where winged creatures typically seem to thrive. Though sometimes a creature with the wings will flutter away from Whale Island and land somewhere new. So I would imagine that Ananame's family probably was just this tiny little community of birds living in the jungle. And I suppose that would yet again be why they pushed her out, because she just didn't conform to what was expected of her family. But with that mighty swipe from Echo, I think that should be the end of our second rogue mail too, as soon as we're ready to skip the day. So you guys have successfully vanquished quite a few of the dangers wandering around the island, and hopefully we won't find any more spawning in the meantime. We might as well bring Rocco up this way, so we should be able to scatter the bunnies waiting all around his mate, 
but he'll also get to meet his next little baby and help guide Echo toward the rabbits. So with that, we should be ready to skip the day. We'll go over here to see what our very last baby between our founders is going to look like. And we'll have to make sure that his sister scoots right over to his side so nothing dangerous can harm him while he's still so vulnerable. He is actually super cute. I love the color of his ram horns. Oh, and he has the antennas and his inactive traits too. Apparently that's another one of the genes that they fixed. I still haven't seen what the antennas look like myself, but I am super, super excited to breed that into our tribe. And with his cracker jaw, he should even be able to help us pick up all of these acorns right by the blowhole of the whale. We actually have acorns falling right on top of it too. Oh, well, you're going to have to help our whale out by picking that up for him. I can't imagine that would be too comfortable for the poor guy. Now the next name on my list is Coconut. So welcome to the tribe, little one. And then we'll go see what the other baby in our scorpion-ness looks like. Oh, he's quite interesting. A little shadow, just like his mother, but he has those almost golden spots, kind of like sunlight falling from between the leaves. I'll bet he would be a sneaking expert, so there's no better family for this little guy to be born into. Now, the next name on my list is Eclipse. So once again, welcome to our tribe, and we'll see what sort of adventures you can have with your family. Unfortunately, he doesn't have the scorpion tail, but now that we have access to it in our mutation menu, I'm not too concerned about losing it in our tribe anymore. So we'll see if perhaps this will be our chance to see the scorpion tail for the very first time. I think I forgot to mention, another thing they changed in this new update was they added the poison resistance to the scorpion tail, so that means they should be able to pick those poison berries after all but I think I am still going to try to unlock the toxic body anyways, just because I think it would look pretty cool on their babies. I was thinking that those who pick the poison berries would have no choice but to live with the damage, but you know, we are going to be training up a little faction of healers, so I bet the purr snout creatures would be good friends with the scorpion tails. One of you had the really cute idea, of giving our mermaids the purse now, so that they could be like little catfish. And I definitely want to give that a try too. I'm sure Lapis, deep down, is hoping that calling out so often on her stump will be enough to draw the attention of a potential partner for her. She's seen so many of her friends and family have babies of their own. And I think deep, deep down, all she really wants to do is train her own little brood of mermaids to sing just as well as she can. Maybe it's actually her Dodomingo voice that's scaring away all of her potential suitors. But let's bring Ananame over to the stinky fruit tree. We'll have her plop down her nest, and hopefully very soon, they can get to work picking up those extra fruits too. We do have quite a few bunnies hopping around in the area, I wonder if they're a bit attracted to the sweet smell of the fruits. They probably grow too high for the rabbits to reach them, so they have to make do with licking the juice from our creature's paws. That would also explain why they always seem to be right underfoot when we're trying to pick from those stinky fruit trees. And I think I may have forgotten to set up Gruel's mutation menu. Oh no, good thing he's so healthy. We don't really have anything to be concerned with, but I did want to place the peacock tail into his genetics, just so we can try to breed that into our bird line too. I think that would look really cool paired with the beak and the wings, of course. I'm sure they're probably meant to be together. But aside from all of those bunnies, all of those bunnies skittering through the grass, Oh, we seriously need to train some good hunters to take care of this infestation. Maybe it'll have to be Echo after all? He's proven himself to be very capable so far. He is still quite young, but I think he would be up for the challenge. First, let's just take a look at our first little birdie baby. Oh, he has the big nose. 
I bet that means that he has the bird beacon as an act of traits. Excellent. So we managed to pass that on successfully once. Someone must really be smiling down on your family, Ananame. We don't have any sort of deities of the sky yet, but I wouldn't be surprised if this series sees the birth of one. The next name on my list is Tiki. So welcome to our tribe. And hopefully soon, we'll be able to pull that beak out of your genetics and land them on your babies. Let's go ahead and sniff around before we go any further, though. Just in case there's anything we need to worry about. Oh, it looks like the rogue males spawn up here, too. I was hoping they were all going to stay in the savannas. But I think you guys are going to have to make a run for it. Luckily, the baby is old enough that he should be able to follow you to the stinky fruits. But we also don't want to risk leaving these creatures without any turns to defend themselves. Maybe what we could do instead is bring Rocco over here as a guard. I'm sure he wouldn't mind standing watch. And then we'll be able to see for ourselves exactly who the strange rogue male is. Oh, he's actually very old. I wonder if that means he's been wandering around here since we landed? There are so many rogue males on Whale Island. We haven't seen a single Baryena yet, and yet the rogue males have been a constant nuisance for our tribe. So, Ananame, we'll bring you over here, and then hopefully you'll be able to breed again with your mate if the fertility doesn't get in the way. That way, we won't have to worry about her catching his attention. It does make me rather nervous to have Lapis sing her songs, because who knows what sort of creatures she's going to drag out of the shadows now. Still no luck attracting a partner for her, unfortunately. But we can bring Echo up this way, so he can hopefully help us take care of some of these pesky bunnies. His sister desperately needs the help right now. And now we can get back to work farming out those licking actions for the purse now too. We got a little bit off track, but I am still determined to unlock it today. Now let's see if today is going to be the lucky day for our scorpion tail. I think it might be. Oh, that definitely looks like a new tail. Yes, our first scorpion tailed baby. And interestingly enough, They've actually named him Vankir. Oh, after the god of the harvest? He has the cracker jaw and everything too. Oh, the only thing he's missing are those nimble fingers. This is quite mysterious. Has Vankir's blessing returned to us on the back of our whale? Oh, maybe he would be the perfect creature to take to these poison berries and help us by gathering some extra food to restore our resources. Our food supplies are starting to get a little bit low, so what better time for the god of the harvest to make his grand return? I think we're gonna have to keep his name as is. Tampering with the god of the harvest would surely only bring ruin upon our tribe. Oh, Tiki, are you hiding a little bunny in your nest? This is why I'm pretty sure that the bunnies do really love those stinky fruits. They just can't reach them themselves. So this particular bunny is hoping that sweet little Tiki... Are you actually preventing me from clicking on Tiki? There we go. I think the bunny has taken over poor Tiki. He's brainwashing poor Tiki to do his bidding. Gruel, I think you might want to save your son or he's going to end up getting stolen by Bunny Kingdom. Tell me that's not the perfect agenda for the bunnies, though. If they had one of our creatures doing all of their work, then they would never have to worry about picking berries again. Our nimble-fingered creatures can pick them more effectively than a bunny, after all, so they could scoop up every last berry and then sneak them away to the burrows, while our tribe has their backs turned. I guess we're going to have to keep a particularly close eye on Tiki. At such a young and impressionable age, who knows what sort of secrets they were whispering into his ear. Well, Lapis, why don't you at least use this chance to teach Echo how to sing from the stumps? That way he'll be ready to carry on that tradition. I think he's more than prepared to dive off into that darkness, chase the bunnies away from their berry bushes, 
and hopefully guard our stinky fruit collectors from any of those wandering males. Oh, this guy is still lurking by our other stinky fruit tree. Seems like he might be hoping to gain a little bit of food from us too. Maybe he's even in cahoots with the bunnies. That would explain why the rogue males are so bothersome here. I'm pretty sure we already licked these stinky juices off of Sunny though. So go ahead, North. You can grab up those very first stinky fruits and show your little brother Coconut how it's done. He should be able to lick off that very last little stench. And then you can gather up a couple more for Rocco to help you out with this time. So how close are we to unlocking the purse now now? Let's see if we can find it again. We're at 17 out of 30, so we're super close now. I am not giving up. We are going to have kitties on this island if it's the last thing I do. I'm not really sure if they need another helping hand. The Eclipse is in the area if you guys do. I suppose for now we could bring him up to the tree over by the blowhole so he can at least pick up those acorns for us as soon as we pass the day. Oh, and little freckles. You're caring for the bunnies as well? Well, this is quite interesting. She does prefer to spend most of her time right by the berry bushes. So I wonder if they may have gotten to her too. Oh, looks like the whale's impressed anyway. There's that blowhole again. Oh, and look at this. Every last one of those berries has grown back, but only the ones that were close to that geyser. So I wonder if they watered these berry bushes? Oh, that's very important for us to keep track of. And that explains why there's so many burrows at this way too. Even the bunnies know that this is the best place for them to collect their food. We'll skitter on over here, Eclipse, because I think you're going to be a little bit more needed by the berry bushes. This is definitely not Echo's preferred job, but he did manage to unlock us a brand new gene, and I would imagine that it's probably the Nimble Fingers. Yep, it looks like that's what we unlocked. So I suppose it would be a good thing for us to place onto our Scorpion babies, especially if they have been blessed by Vankir himself. It seems as though the whale has also blessed this family again. Because with that big nose, it should also mean that the beak is in his genetics. And he has the peacock tail too. Oh, quite interesting. The whale has spoken. And this baby is clearly quite special too. The next name on my list is actually Mango. Which seems terribly, terribly fitting for his family. Since they do seem to prefer the stinky fruits. You know, I actually wanted to change their gems as well. So far, we're using the orange color and the blue for the mermaids, so let's give our little birds pink. That way, we'll be able to tell them apart from our other families, so we'll know exactly who's carrying those special genetics that we're looking for. But instead of having them breed again, let's buckle down on our stinky fruit collecting. And Aname is actually great for this, since she can only pick one at a time. The running legs and the nimble fingers are great for the food collecting side of things. But since we're just trying to farm out these actions right now, picking up less fruits is oddly beneficial. I'm sure Vankir would just be terribly offended if he heard all of this for himself. His presence is going to make a big, big change in our tribe. But now, poor Lapis, you can sing out just one last time. Try desperately to catch the attention of somebody other than the rogue males. But she just hasn't had any luck. Maybe she's starting to wonder if she needs to make her own little pilgrimage to a brand new throne somewhere else on the island. She found Ananame way back here, I think, right? That was back when she was still by the savannas. So despite the fact that it's quite dangerous to set herself up so close to all of this tall grass, I wonder if in the next episode, she might actually consider taking the journey, but we have to be down to the very last of our licking actions. So Rocco, go ahead and pick up those stinky fruits. We'll have North lick that off of you. Maybe one more will do the trick, but we'll have to move them over to the other tree instead. Maybe this was Coconut's destiny all along. Master of the stinky fruits 
and now Master of the Purse now too. There we go. We finally have it in our mutation menu. So that means in the next episode, not only is a little Van Kirm going to leave his mark on our tribe, but we should also be ready to start our very first line of little purse now babies. So for now, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye guys!